He said that he was very proud that I was with you. It's nowhere near the pride I feel to be here. <laughs> but before I start, don't leave, Hassan. I think this is a perfect opportunity to show appreciation to Hassam and his team, and team is a really important part of that. I don't know if they're gonna let you do that later, so I think this would be a really great moment to show him just how fantastic a day and a conference this was. In my pocket, I put it there because it, it, it rings on me, but it's an Apple Watch. And I had to take it off because as I wandered through the hallways before, um, I got the warning that the decibel level was too high and my ears were going to be damaged. That's a really good thing at a conference, so just so you know. Uh, before I, let me get my, my clicker. My clicker, clicker? I don't see it up here, guys. Oh, yes, I do. I'm half blind, I'm half deaf, I'm still alive, though. Um, before I introduce myself and um, uh, the title of this presentation, uh, which is Elements of Success with Salesforce, um, and that is me, and you may feel free to link to me or, or reach out on, on Twitter, et cetera. I pretty much link to anybody who links to me, and it's a great way to send messages to me, so I really love, I love LinkedIn. Um, I'll introduce myself in a moment, but I just wanted to say I have n I've been to a lot of conferences uh, throughout uh, my time in the ecosystem uh, in many countries and many cities, uh, mostly in the United States. I'm, I'm, I'm located in the American region. Uh, first time on the, on the African coast and the continent of Africa. I don't think I've ever seen the kind of enthusiasm and um, level of conversation and exuberance and passion in, in a relatively, I mean, it's a lot, 500 people is a lot of people for one of these um, conferences. I don't think I've ever seen it matched. And so you are to be congratulated for being that. And it's just, inf it's just infectious. Just infectious. So. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that, uh, about community and networking in, in a minute. Um, that's me, uh, but that's not this presentation. This is a uh, title slide of a presentation that was really the first in a series of presentations. Uh, this presentation will be the third. This was the first. This was um, presented at Punta Dreaming, which is down in Uruguay, uh, in South America. That's 2018, so it's a few years ago, about five years ago. Um, it was about achieving goals uh, on the Salesforce platform, and you can go watch that. It's on YouTube. They recorded, just like uh, these folks are recording, and I, I encourage you to watch it because um, it has some really interesting content in it, so I encourage that. And the second one was in London, um, and that was at London's Calling a year later. Uh, it was called Formulas for Learning Salesforce. It focused on learning uh, strategies and techniques because that's what I am. I'm a technical educator. And I teamed up with my buddy Dan Appleman. Some of you may know Dan Appleman's name. The MVP uh, focuses on Apex and coding. He goes back uh, almost as far as I do. I'm not sure. We, we have a competition as to who, who goes back further, and then we start thinking about that and we drop the subject. <laughs> and you may go watch that one also if you capture the QR code. Both of these are on, on YouTube because these conferences are more and more all available, which I just think is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Once upon a time, they were not. And if you missed it, you missed it. And now they're captured, and it's just fantastic. So you can go watch that one too. So what is today's context? Today's context. Well, um, Elements of success specifically around winning opportunities and advancing your career. And we really want to talk about career. And I know that many of you here, or at least a certain number, because I've talked to them, are very new in the Salesforce ecosystem. Uh, some of you have been involved for years. But very often, this is something that you know, sort of gets 
not really thought about very often, that you're really, you're in a career here. This is for the long haul. Salesforce has been around over 20 years and it's gonna be around for a while, I predict that. Um, so you really wanna be thinking about that. Um, I've been around for a while, obviously, <laughs> shows here. And I'm not gonna go through this so much to sell myself or to you know, toot my own horn. There's a reason I wanna show you where I've been and what I've done because I'm going to be presenting you with some perspective. And in order for you to validate my perspective, I want you to know where I got it from. Your lives may be very different. Your career paths may be completely, completely different. But I like to use my background as um, sort of uh, examples and to, to make some of my points. So take it with a grain of salt, but I'm um, just going to go through this fairly quickly. I've been a software developer since 1984. So that goes back quite a ways. And those were some of the early technologies. We won't talk about them. But I fell into Salesforce around 2009. I've been a Trailhead Academy training partner. That's my uniform here. That's Trailhead Academy. That is the, that is the division of Trailhead that creates courseware. Once upon a time, it was called Salesforce University. Some of you may know it from that. Before that, it was called Training and Certification. It's a different division of Salesforce that Trailhead evolved on another sort of a different canyon, and these two canyons were across from each other, and then they merged. Um, so I've been a partner teaching Salesforce content, primarily technical content, developer content. That's my specialty. But I have a team of instructors, over a dozen instructors, that teach the official Salesforce classes in America as well as around the world. Um, I've also been an instructor myself. I don't teach anymore, uh, pretty rare the last few years. Um, I co-authored a book for Salesforce, uh, Visual Force in Practice back in 20, 2013. This predates Trailhead and there wasn't that much content on Visual Force, so we put a book together and what we did was we crowdsourced it with a number of other MVPs and we each wrote a chapter and they want because they wanted to publish this book like before Dreamforce that year and they started thinking about it in June. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, you're not that that's not gonna happen. But we were able to pull the authors together. That book is available if you if you Google it, you can download it. It's a free PDF if you're really interested in Visual Force. We won't go there. I've uh, been a plural site author since 2013, and I produced a series of uh, play-by-plays, and many of you have come up to me, and I always love that telling me how valuable you found them for a particular pursuit, and I just love that. They're all up there, they're all still there. Uh, you can link to it from my LinkedIn site if you, if you want to. Um, in 2013, I was nominated as an MVP, and I kept the MVP title for 10 years, and then they finally pushed me into the Hall of Fame, which I'm very grateful for, because there's some things I don't really want to do anymore as an, as an MVP, so it's nice I can relax now. Um, I was an advanced developer, which turned into PD2 programming assignment once upon a time, predating Trailhead. We actually had a programming assignment for people to pass the developer, advanced developer exam, where we actually graded an actual um, org that you did some work in. And it was quite eye-opening to see people's work. That went away when they wanted to scale it out and was replaced with the super badges. And, um, Oh, I was also a CTA board review facilitator for one year, working closely with the architect team, and I got to watch the architects come through, people who were incredibly skilled at what they did, as well as a lot of people who were not and didn't know that they shouldn't have been there. And that led to reorganizing the whole architect program, and it is, it is much better set up now. So that, that's, that was a good thing. Subject matter expert, I should go a little bit faster. Trail Hub curriculum and certification teams helping with certifications. I content author, I built the data integration super badge, that was mine. Um, and I've been a Dreamforce, you get the idea, right? So a ton of stuff. Well, but this is not really the, the way to look at this. This is the way to look at it. And this is actually, this was something I started playing with. I'm gonna to step to the side so you can see it. This is my 40 year career in technology. And what's interesting is it starts like way back playing around with early technology. That was my first customer uh, with Apple. And then I worked with database software, moved to San Francisco, et cetera. But the really interesting thing started to happen here. That's when I discovered Salesforce and my life changed. Um, literally, my entire career trajectory changed, and that's why I want to show you this. 
Um, I discovered force.com. I did my first Dreamforce presentation. I did my first instruction. Uh, I did a bunch of things with, uh, I was established as a training partner. I worked with other technology too. There was my first Pluralsight course, elected as an MVP. I started working with Aura technology very early on. And as an MVP, I had access to the beta and that led to me being able to build training content. Um, so I built training videos for Salesforce. So that's when I did the data integration super badge. And here we rewrote the Aura course for Lightning Web Components when it came out. And then um, I launched my last Pluralsight course uh, on my 10th MVP year, which is called Salesforce, the Salesforce uh, platform for developers, the big picture, which was I wanted to capture everything about the platform and put it in one video course so that somebody who didn't really know anything about Salesforce, developers, it's targeting developers, could watch that course and understand just how broad and deep the platform is. That was my goal. And it's out there and it's free. Anybody can watch it on Pluralsight, you can find it. And that's when I went into the Hall of Fame. All right, so what's interesting about this to me is it really, it really helped me identify some of the things that I learned along the way. As I went back, you know, we, we walk through life backwards, right? We bump into things, but we can see really clearly where we've been, but we really don't know where the hell we're going, pardon, pardon my French. And when you look back, you can see patterns, but it's like, well, how do I make sure as I'm walking backwards, I, I don't make the wrong decisions? How do, I, how do I know the right decision? Okay, well, a few things that I've learned that I want to share, and that is the context for this presentation. Here's the first one. Everybody knows this one, right? Change is constant, especially if you're in technology, right? Not only is it constant, it's constantly accelerating, right? Things change so fast. How in the world do you keep up, particularly in the Salesforce world? Right? We know Salesforce 60 acquisitions over the last 20 years. Every time they acquire something, they rename it. <laughs> then they rename it again. And again, well, we won't go there. So change is constant, particularly in technology and particularly with Salesforce. Yeah, but the more things change, the more they stay the same. Things change, but you know, the patterns don't change. Customers are still customers. Customer problems are the same problems I experienced 20 years ago before Salesforce. So there's this funny dichotomy where things are constantly changing and yet you still have to apply lessons learned over time. And, and the trick is, how do, you, how do you distinguish them? How do you put them together? Because time is a really important component. I call it the undeniable dimension. Things take time. Talk to anybody on the CTA journey. You know? You're not just gonna go do an integration and go up in front of the review board. I mean, I've had people tell me that that was their plan. And it's like, today it's pretty much known, but you know what, seven years ago when I was facilitating the CTA board, people would come in thinking that, well, you know, I've done an integration, I can be an architect, and let me tell you, it's painful to watch. That doesn't happen anymore. But time is needed. You know, information is rapidly available, more rapidly than ever. Wisdom, wisdom is not available. That You have to live your wisdom. You have to try things, and we were having a conversation the other day about the why, right? How is, okay, I can find out how to do that, um, but the why, 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 why is it that? Why was that done that way by somebody years ago? Or why should I do it this way and not that way? That's much harder to learn, and you have to learn it from someone who's done it, right? And it took them time to get there, and so you can accelerate it, you can find efficiencies, you can find people to mentor you, et cetera, hopefully, and you can learn lots of different ways, but you can't deny it, it's real. I like this one. You can do well by doing good. We need more good, right? And you can do good and not do well. That, there's a lot of that. And you can do well and not do good at all. But you can do well by doing good, especially with Salesforce, because they have such a strong philanthropic side. And while that 
division you know, is constantly changing like everything else in Salesforce. It's there and it's very strong. And if you want to learn more about it, just, just go up to the website to find out. There's even a play-by-play -play on, on the philanthropic side of Salesforce. You can learn all about it and it's free to watch on Pluralsight. So that's just a really, I think, a very important point because we need more good in the world. And this one, of course, I was having conversations and I think I, I was in an, an ISV presentation. They know who they are, they're here somewhere. And they had this wonderful slide and it said, you know, Salesforce just feeds you opportunities. And it's true. Sort of like I used to be in the restaurant business a long time ago. The reason, you know why people work in the restaurant business? Because you always make sure you're gonna eat. Because there's always food, unless you've got a really cruel boss. But in the Salesforce world, there is always opportunity, right? But some people say, well, it's really lucky. Oh, you work in Salesforce, it's really lucky. Well, not really. Luck is what happens when your preparation meets the opportunity. Because you can have opportunities that come your way. Somebody's firing at them like, you know, like a tennis ball machine. You ever see a tennis ball machine? If you're not ready to hit the ball, you're going to get hit by the tennis balls. I mean, you're certainly not going to, you know, you're not going to learn how to play tennis. So you have to be prepared. And of course, one of the problems is, as I said, we walk through life backwards. How do you know what the opportunities are coming? How do you prepare for it? And that, of course, is a trick. So we're going to talk about that. Maybe you've seen this slide. I actually used this slide in my uh, Punta del Este, uh, Punta Dreaming conference. This is actually from 27. And back then, they were talking about 3.3 million jobs being produced in the Salesforce ecosystem by 2022. This is one of the later slides to, from Dreamforce this year. Look at that. Because of the AI stuff, they're now predicting a net gain of employee jobs related to AI-powered Salesforce solutions, 11 million between 22 and 28. I just thought this was a really interesting number, and I'm sure you've been hearing about this, and we've had some presentations on this, and this is something to pay attention to, right? So this is opportunity, right? Okay, so here's, if you can see this, I'm gonna move out of the way because these are some animations. There's you, and there's the opportunity, and of course, that's what you want, right? How do you do that? How do you do that? All right, well, when we think of opportunities, we typically think of them with regards to role, and domain. Not everybody thinks about domain, but domain's really important. We're gonna talk about what it is in a minute. Role is really easy. Salesforce is a very role-oriented platform, right? And we've got, you know, admin, developer, consultant, we have architect, designer, and then, you know, we've got all these other positions they've got these roles for, and okay, well, you know, let's focus on these guys, because these are really the core roles, depending on what domain you're working in. But there was a really interesting survey that was put together by a company called 10K. They're a, they're a global recruitment company, an implementation company. Well, they had really interesting results last year for the first time. They saw a drop in demand globally, 50% or more for these roles like consultant and architect and designer. That's like unusual. Usually it was the other way around. But notice this. Administrator and developer didn't go down as much. Hmm, that's interesting. I mean, what does that suggest? I'm not so sure, I have some ideas on it. Um, and then there's, there's you know, the real main point here that I think administrator and developer are still the core roles of the system, right? And if you have a really good developer, maybe people say, well, I don't really need an architect because I just need the developer to get stuff done and I need somebody to care and feed the, the, the machine, the beast and that's admin, and I don't know if I need an architect. I, I really don't know, but maybe it has something to do with this. The talent supply has increased substantially. Notice these. Africa, 88%. Hmm, the room is full. <laughs> Europe, 37%, also up. Well, that's really interesting. So is it that there's more supply, therefore the demand is not as high because it's meeting the demand, or is it that a lot of people are getting into the ecosystem and the, there just isn't as much demand and now they're, they're not able to find the opportunities. I don't know the answer to this. I'm just wanting to point it out. Right. Okay, so that's role. What about domain? What's domain? Well, this is a slide from my latest Pluralsight course where I tried to map the domains and the white bubbles are the clouds. And again, this is marketing terms. This was two years ago. Some of them have already changed. Service cloud, sales cloud, experience cloud, marketing cloud, industry cloud, 
That's analytics cloud, integration cloud. They call them something different now. Salesforce Anywhere. Does anybody still talk about Salesforce Anywhere? Heroku and Functions and Mobile. Right, so these are domains. So these are like product domains, sales cloud, service cloud, commerce cloud, marketing cloud. So I'm going to be a developer in e-commerce, or I'm going to be an architect in sales service cloud, or I want to focus on marketing cloud, et cetera. So that's a product domain that you would chase as a role. But then we also have technical domains, right? Analytics, that's a real technical domain, data science. Uh, integration, right? I want to be an integration architect, or I want to be a mobile developer, or I want to play with Heroku and functions. It's really technical. So I want to be a developer, but I want to focus on integration or one of the others. And then we have uh, business domains, industries. It's all about business domains. And it is growing rapidly, especially here uh, in uh, the EMEA region. I had a quick conversation. Um, with the presenter of the, uh, the industry CPQ. And it's hot. It's a hot platform. It's hotter here than it is in America. I had an instructor who wanted to teach it, and there's no demands for training. Maybe they don't want to pay the price. Hard to know, but it's definitely hotter here. All right, so we've got role and we've got domain. And then, of course, you say, well, of course, I'm going to match my skills and my experience to the role and the domain, and I'm good to go. I'll get the job. Well, not really. Those are your hard skills. But you also have traits and behaviors. I, I lump these with soft skills. I mean, there are a lot of soft skills, like how to interview, right? But I call these softer skills. And they are critical for you to be thinking of when you are targeting your opportunities. What are these? What are traits? Traits, personal characteristics that can influence success or failure. This is who you are and how it applies to your meeting any opportunity. What are some traits? Oops, I went a little too fast. The first one that I think is most important is that one. For those of you who can't see it, that says integrity. Integrity, well, that's related to trust. Ooh, where have we heard that before? It's just critical. And I've seen people blow it, out of, blow it, blow it up because of a lack of it. And you know what? If you're talking about a career, integrity follows you. Right? Breaking, I told this to my teenage son when we were having some challenges. Um, he lost my trust at a certain point in his life, and I, I had to try to explain to him that, you know, it's really hard to gain trust in, initially, and when you break it, it's going to take a lot longer to get it back. It can be broken in an instant, and it follows you. So just an important point. Enthusiasm. Well, we got a lot of that in the room ton of that in the Salesforce ecosystem. Five minutes left, I guess I've got to go faster. Enthusiasm, curiosity, learnability. Learnability is a term that's often used for something. How learnable is that thing? This is more about you. How can you learn things? How, how well do you learn things? And of course, determination. Because you have to work hard. You have to do it when you can't do it. And you got to keep your humility, right? So those are traits. We'll quickly go through behaviors. What are some behaviors? Behaviors are conscious actions in which one conducts oneself that can also influence success. This says focus on your strengths. Don't focus on your weaknesses. Focus on your strengths. Let somebody else do the, the thing you're weak in because you're valuable because of your strengths. Be able to accept criticism so that you can improve yourself on your weaknesses, right? Communicate effectively. If you're working in an English environment and you're not an ESL person, Make sure that the people who are listening to you understand you. It's nothing personal, but they may, they're not going to tell you if they can't understand you. So make sure that a friend, trusted conf confidant who speaks native English has no problem with your communication skills because if you blow that, they remember. Embrace time. Use time wisely and learn smart. Learn how to learn faster. All right? Those are behaviors. And this is what you're looking for, right? You're looking for the intersection of the Venn diagram. I'm going to skip over this. This was a, I made a code abstraction of this idea for the programmers in the room. And I'll, and I'll, have a, I'll post this. But basically, I, I was playing around, and I, I, I created a class called Career Opportunity. And when you instantiate it, you identify the role and domain. And then you call the, the win opportunity method, passing in your traits, your behaviors, your skills, your experience, and you call this black box method that says candidate matches opportunity. Did I win it? 
And that's just an anonymous, an execute anonymous call. So that's, that's a tribute to the Apex programmers. And it just, we just walked through that, all right? So I'm running out of time and I'm almost done. And the most important piece for last, at the intersection of that Venn diagram is something that's really important. And as a matter of fact, it's probably the most important thing. It's the community. It's the Ohana. This is what distinguishes Salesforce from every other technology that I have ever worked in. The community is it, right? Ohana builds its culture around the spirit of Ohana, which in Hawaiian means family, our close-knit ecosystem of everybody involved. And you have a responsibility in the Ohana to make everybody else's life better. And they have a responsibility to you. And that's why it's so powerful. That's what that first presentation is about. So I won't beat that to death. The community is the X factor, which is a variable that can have the most significant impact. Ohana affects your career in the Salesforce ecosystem. Don't ever forget it. And the most important thing along with that is, it's not you just sitting in the meetings or the conferences. You have to engage. That's why I said the team that works with these guys, with Hassam, is so critical. You have to be on that team. You have to reach out. In my career, every year I was involved in something with community, and it's where all my opportunities came from. My original New York opportunities came from that group. When I moved to California, my first job in California came from the, that group where I eventually joined as a board member, and it just kept going and going, and after 10 years of running a .NET user group, I was prepared to step into teaching. That's what prepared me for my career change. I, I didn't know I was going there, but I got there. So all along the lines, go up to the community site, go look at the, well, let me just put that back up there. That's where you can tap in online, internationally, absolutely available. All right, our key takeaway so I can wrap up, seek out opportunities that fit you. They have to fit you. If they don't fit you, they're, they're just gonna go by. Target both the role and the domain, but you gotta nurture your traits and your behaviors. You wanna engage with your Ohana. Don't just take advantage of it. You have gotta be part of it because otherwise there's, you won't get anywhere near. And cultivate each step of your career. Thank you. You can stay with me. All right. Okay. Oh. Thank you very much. So, again, we are very happy to have Don Robbins with us. He is, uh, I think, when he start, wrote his book, I didn't even know about Salesforce. So at that moment, I start, I think, and maybe I bought already your uh, Visual Force in practice. Ah. This is uh, how <laughs> we learn. So before you leave, we would like to uh, give you a gift, which is offered by <laughs> Hexagon Digital. Thank you. It's our pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.